Moving in MPA. I'm going to try that one more time. I, I am not the Baptist minister from Ebenezer uh, Baptist Church, but I'm a labor organizer, so I'm going to try that one more time. Good evening, NNPA. I knew you had it in you. Here is the problem and the challenge of being the junior senator number now 99, not 100. I always have to follow Reverend Raphael Warnock. And I um, don't have uh, as rousing of uh, a set of remarks for you tonight, uh, but I will offer you comments from uh, my family, from uh, the state of California that I so proudly represent. But first, I must say that I am so glad to be back with the leadership of the National uh, New Publishers Association. Uh, it is not my first time, it is not my first rodeo being uh, in your space, uh, and I am grateful to be invited back. You see, my first time was back in Chicago uh, when Danny Bakewell was serving as chairman, uh, when it was a room much smaller than this, and we were all intimate friends then. But we knew then that we belonged in rooms that would get as big as this, uh, and it is the work of the publishers across the country. Uh, the continued commitment that you have to the communities that you serve, uh, they have kept us moving forward and pressing forward to make sure that our community had the accurate information that reflected the choices and the news that was going on for them and their communities. And you are being critical to the history uh, of those contributions. And so for those of us who have not yet reached our 50s, <laughs> who don't quite know the history of all of the papers uh, in, uh, that are represented in this room, who don't yet know Amelia Ward and uh, Sun Reporter in San Francisco, uh, or, or Lisa Collins uh, and LA Focus speaking on behalf of black churches across Los Angeles. For those who don't know, uh, about all about the black owned paper that exists in Nebraska or Philadelphia yeah. or Baltimore. Uh, for those that may not yet know, uh, on behalf of those who, uh, of us who've not yet met a half century, I just want to say thank you for bringing us this far uh, and say thank you for what you will do to continue to inform our communities, making sure that our voices are represented uh, in the publishing and media space as your organizations evolve. Thank you so much for what you've done. Uh, and I want to stand to celebrate uh, all of you. You know, I, uh, I get a little bit of credit for being a, a rabble rouser um, from, from, from my, your leadership team, uh, my friends, uh, because uh, in a meeting, I don't know, like earlier this year, just earlier this year, um, in, uh, the LA Sentinel office, uh, small conference room, there were many of us who, a few of us actually, who sat and met and talked about the state of the black publishers and your media organizations. And we sat and had that conversation, we made ourselves a little plan and we set out to organize to try to accomplish some meaningful things uh, on behalf of this community. And we are still in the progress of getting there, but we've made some incredible progress um, and I'm proud to have stood with Senator Warnock and Senator Booker to do our part to make sure that these stories continue to be told. And it's funny that I follow uh, Reverend Warnock, uh, my colleague, because um, I sat in that boardroom at the LA Sentinel um, and I thought about my own daughter. Um, my daughter is not five, she is 10. She just turned uh, 10 just last week. And I thought about the things that brought me to Los Angeles. I thought about the things that brought me to Washington, D.C. I thought about my journey to becoming a United States Senator literally in 24 hours. I thought about what we all just experienced, some of us experienced in Chicago uh, just a few weeks ago. I thought a great deal um, about what I was able to witness in person just uh, last Tuesday, what many of us watched on, on television. I thought about the history 
that we have been, that I have had the privilege of being a part of. And uh, I have gotten that admonishment from our fellow friend to write letters myself. I think it's a piece of advice that she gives often. Um, and for me, I thought mostly about um, a story that my daughter told me. Uh, and as I was chronicling the history that was being made in Chicago and trying to process uh, that for myself, I sat down to take that advice and write my little girl a letter based on the story that she told me. Let me tell you the story, she, the, our, our little bit of experience. In Los Angeles during the pandemic uh, in 2021, Dr. Chavis, uh, my little girl was in kindergarten. And um, it was the election, it was actually the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in 2020. And her kindergarten class was actually having their own election. And we're get, just getting to know each other, but I am a highly competitive person. <laughs> I, I think it was the, it's the HBCU in me that is, uh, just makes me deeply, deeply competitive. And uh, the, my, I listened to my little girl's kindergarten class have their own mock election. And I heard my daughter cast her vote, her one only vote for the turtle who only got one vote. All right now. And I filed it in the back of my mind uh, because I knew that I had to come back to my little girl and ask her, why did she give her vote to the turtle? So at dinner, we sat down and, and we talked uh, about it and I asked her about the election. How did it turn out? Who, who was running? Who won? How did she vote? She didn't know I was ear hustling on her, on her <laughs> class. She said, well, Mama the Wolf won. I said, well, who else was running? She said, well, it was the snake and the eagle uh, and the fox and the turtle. Well, well, baby, how many folks voted for the wolf? She said, well, everybody really voted for the wolf. Well, well Nyla, why didn't you vote for the wolf? She said, I said, well, what did he promise? She said, well, he promised that he would give everybody more candy and more time at recess. My daughter was five. Uh, I know she likes candy and time at recess just like every other kid. Well, baby, why didn't you cast your vote for the wolf? Who'd you vote for? She said, well, mama, I voted for the turtle. I said, well, what did, what did the turtle promise? She said, the mama, the, the turtle promised that he would leave nobody behind at recess. All right. And promised that to make sure that everybody got some candy. And what my little girl was telling me in that moment was not just the story of how she cast her vote, but the vision of that she had for her life. The responsibility and expectations that she had for her parents and the grown-ups that were around her. And as I thought about becoming a United States Senator, I thought uh, mostly that I never wanted to be a United States Senator ever in my life. But I also thought about why my daughter cast her vote for the turtle. And why she deserved to be able to see her mama sit in the United States Senate today as the only black woman in the chamber. I thought about why she deserved to see her mama as only our nation's third black woman in the United States Senate. I thought about how Reverend Warnock made sure that I knew that I was only the number 12 in a long line of 2,000 and now six senators to serve in the chamber. I thought very much about how it wasn't necessarily about what I wanted, but about what our children, my daughter, deserved. Deserved to see themselves in the place, in whatever place that they could imagine. And so in NPA, as I sat in Chicago and I was sitting and processing every single night what we were actually doing 